welcome back to a special members only video here at the OHIO podcast. No introductions needed. You've joined, you're a member, you know who we are. This is a very special video that Chris and I wanted to do because I have a theory, Chris, that I want to run by you. Okay. Ryan Day's had the off season of all off seasons. Absolutely. This has been incredible. And I, I was sitting back and I was thinking, how did this happen? What took place? Obviously, you mentioned it over at the Cotton Bowl. Uh, coach Drinkwitz, the Missouri coach, talked about how he needed to uh, quit wearing so many hats, step away from being the uh, play caller, and uh, that he was doing a disservice to his players by trying to be too many, too much to, to them, and that he needed to trust his hiring ability to put the right guy in place to be the play caller. And that made all the difference for Missouri in the 2023 season. Ryan Day sitting literally like five feet from him and listening to this, realizing this is my issue. There's been somebody else, though, I have noticed hanging around the program a lot lately. He's been over at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center several times this spring. In this offseason, a former head coach and someone who you know, Chris, I have great admiration in. I do believe and I have I have confirmed that Ryan Day has had several conversations with this man. Of course, I'm talking about my hero, Jim Tressel. Yeah. I believe that Ryan Day had a conversation with Jim Tressel very early on in the offseason after the Cotton Bowl and had a heart-to-heart -heart with Mr. Buckeye himself. Do you believe that that conversation took place, number one? That's my first question. And number two, here's my other question. Why did he have that conversation with Jim Tressel and not one Urban Meyer? Well, I do believe the conversation took place. Absolutely. Um, I've heard grumblings that, as you said, multiple conversations have taken place over the course of the off season. Um, as far as why it would be Trestle and not Urban, well, for one thing, uh, Urban came in and he took over a program that, yes, was in a little bit of disarray after the the whole tattoo gate and then the the uh, year under Fickle in which Fickle was not given a good opportunity. Uh, you know, he was trying to just keep the, the program together. Um, but Urban came into a pretty good situation. Um, whereas you look at Trussell, Trussell was coming in after – the Cooper years, which by all accounts in many ways were somewhat successful, but where Ryan Day has lacked has been in beating that team up north mm -hmm. and in big games. And I feel like Tressel understands trying to rebuild a program after a few years of those struggles. Um, I also think that two things come to mind. One, even though no one is going to say it outright, I believe Ryan Day would probably be a little concerned that Urban may try to step in. Mm. And possibly I didn't even think about that. Even what, even what his program back. Mm. Um, I didn't even think about that. Urban's a very, very ultra competitive guy. You know, oh, yeah. he's not. I mean, Urban Meyer would kick a kitten if it meant getting a win. Uh, Urban's addicted to the dub. That's what, yeah. like, that's my new slogan for Urban Meyer. Uh, my, if uh, I, we need to make a T-shirt that has Urban Meyer's face on it, says "addicted to the dub." I love him. He, he was he was a great coach. He had a lot of success. But you're right. He is addicted to the win. He could not tolerate a loss. Mm -hmm. And especially when it comes to that team up north. Or in his, bowl games. In, his inability to learn and win from the L, his inability to do that 
is destructive to him as a human being. Yes. And to those around him. Yes. Um, I think that is, I don't know what psychosis that would be, uh, but that is definitely what I, if I was a, a sports, narcissism involved. <laughs> if I was a sports doctor, that's what I would say is this man does not know how to lose and make that a positive. Like the, it, 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 it becomes super negative to him and everybody else around him, uh, which is why the whole Jacksonville thing was doomed from the beginning oh, and yeah, why it was, it was a con- why it was a complete dumpster fire is because there was there was guaranteed you were going to lose and that man under the guaranteed umbrella of L's was not going to go well at all. No. Um Urban Meyer is a player's coach. And what I mean by that is he's going to get the very best out of a player or you're going to go somewhere else. Yeah. Herb, uh, uh, Jim Trestle is a coach's coach. Yes. And I think, I think Ryan Day realizes this. You know, Jim Trestle is the type of guy when he starts talking, he controls a room. And it's not because of his magnetic personality as far as it being, he, he's loud or, you know, just a giant human being or something like it's It's his ability to speak in a, Humble, yet powerful tone. Yes, it's very much like a a a quiet, intelligent minister can captivate an audience mm-hmm. or a sanctuary that doesn't necessarily have a bombastic voice or um, you know a a type of charismatic type of. But yet, when they speak in such power and truth. It captivates people, and that's Urban Ma- – and that is – sorry, that's Jim Tressel. You look at these yeah. these personalities he coached, A.J. Hawk, yeah. Bobby Carpenter, oh, that's uh, the Marcus Freeman, you know, Anthony Schlegel. freaking Schlegel, right? Like these guys have personalities that are completely charismatic and can control a room, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. When Jim Tressel walks in, they're like, they're like preschoolers. Yes. <laughs> Okay. If you, if you listen to to Schlegel or or Carpenter talk, it's that way to this day. Mm-hmm. He just commands that respect when he walks. Those in the guys will die on a hill defending that man. Okay. Yeah. He's Absolutely. he's he is the general to them. Um, and it's because he has earned their love, respect, and admiration. Yeah. And I think Ryan Day knows this, understands this, respects this, and wants, and wants to tap into this. Yeah. Which I think out of all the moves he's made this offseason, great coaching hires, incredible NIL deals with these players. Transfers. Uh, you name it. He's done it. He's. I think the greatest move he's done that no one has talked about yet is I think he has gone out and has acquired Jim Trestle to be his life coach. And if, if this story ever comes out, I want you all to know you heard it here first, because I think that's what happened. That's what I really I, think I, is I, what's I happened. I believe he's been receiving some guidance from Trestle. I, I agree with that hundred percent, whether it's, consistent guidance i don't know whether it's i mean it's not like jim trestle is going out there and coaching and doing the x's and o's he is just i think helping ryan day get centered in the right frame of mind we we know for a fact that ryan day's changes with special teams has come from a phone call and and talking with jim trestle yes we know that he went on the Buckeye cruise and Jim Trestle was on the Buckeye cruise with him. Mm-hmm. We know he was at spring practice and was a guest speaker at spring practice uh, last week. And th- those are three within the last three months, three times. Those two guys have been doing something together. And I can't help but feel like Ryan Day has the same kind of worldview as as Jim Tressel does and his his family, faith, and football type of mentality. And I th- I think through through the avenue of just being Ohio State head coach 
and they both share that, that those conversations I think have led to Ryan Day realizing like I can be better as a coach if I emulate a little bit more of what Jim Trussell was able to portray upon his players that he led for the decade that he was at Ohio State. And if we're – what if I told you that the, the, the next chapter of Ryan Day's coaching career is Jim Tressel 2.0, that he's – first half was John Cooper 2.0, the second half is Jim Tressel 2.0. How does that look in your mind, Chris? Oh, that's a beautiful thing, Eric. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? That's a beautiful thing because I'll tell you what. The biggest criticism, as we've as we've all said, is with Ryan Day. A. He tenses up in the big games. He wasn't successful against that team up north. He wasn't successful in big games, bowl games, as successful as he could have been. And that was very John Cooperish. But you look at Jim Trussell, like you said, not the biggest guy, not the loudest guy, but a, a, a real genius of football. He has such a high football IQ. And I believe Ryan Day possesses a very high football IQ. Mm-hmm. He's He actually, I believe, has the ability to get over that hump based on what he has done the last few years. But I think that's the big thing for Ryan Day because you mentioned it earlier when I mentioned Urban. Urban's biggest flaw is what? He can't learn from defeat. Mm-hmm. I would argue as much it's toxic. as... toxic. He becomes toxic when it as happens. As much as Ryan Day irritates me, I feel like every year that he takes a defeat, he does take something away from it. You look at that first loss to Clemson. Yeah, look at the from, next game. Look at the next one. You yeah. had the butt kicker from Alabama. Mm-hmm. And we came back and had another strong season. But you know what? I, I really feel like he is – he has that ability to learn from those mistakes. I think maybe he just needed someone to point him the way. If he can take and have that – that Jim Trussell type of mentality. I, I will honestly predict this. If, if he can do this, this coach that I have been so critical of for the last three seasons, if he can just take that Jim Trussell mentality and actually step back, be that leader, uh, be that leader of men, let his coaches do their jobs, hold them accountable. And, Go out there and just coach without fear because I would say that as well. Everybody could, talked about Trussell Ball and how boring it was, but I don't think he showed fear in his play calling. I think he just had a consistent a consistent system he worked with. He, he stayed true to who he was and yeah, what he believed correct. in. That's um, right. Here's but one I more. If you do that, Ryan Day will have at least two championships in the next decade. Well, here's how he's going to do that. Here's how he's going to do that. So one of the things that Jim Trestle had is that Jim Trestle came from a legitimate coaching tree. His yeah. dad was a championship coach here in the state of Ohio Baldwin in Wallace, Division right? Three. Wallace, was it Division yeah, Three Division Two? Coming. Yeah. Those years of growing up on campus and watching his dad coach shaped him okay and 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 he if you've ever read his uh book the, you know i think it's called what is it the, um, the winner's manual yes now what's it called um he talks so much about the influence his father had on him now ryan day's father committed suicide when he was a child ryan day has talked about how Chip Kelly has been that father figure in his life. You mentioned that that Jim Tressel 
had a blueprint of success and stayed true to who he was as a coach. And that came from his father. Like that was, that was in the DNA and given to him by dad. And he stayed true to that. And he won a national championship with that. So Chip's been brought back to refine that playbook to, yes. Yes. to, to help Ryan Day it, rediscover who he is. Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you, I would not have been, I would not be surprised if this conversation we're having about dads and father figures came up with Jim Trussell and Jim said, well, why don't you just go get Chip? I can see it. Like, I, I'm telling you, some of the stuff I've been thinking about, Chris, I'm like, it makes too much sense. It yeah. makes too much sense. And I don't know. It's just a theory. It's it's a crazy theory. Maybe I'm just reading way too much in this, but I just find it completely ironic that all of a sudden Jim Trestle's around this program a whole bunch more. So what you're saying is Jim Trestle was responsible for reviving this program 24 years ago. And now – He's going to be responsible for its next national championship after not having coached in over a decade. <laughs> not responsible, but he's going to have a hand in it. I do. I do. I, I think when it's all said and done, do not be surprised when Ryan Day in an interview after the 2024 season at Ohio State wins a national championship, if in some kind of interview he talks about the importance of a conversation he had with Jim Trestle. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised at all. But you know, more important yeah, would, than anything is I won't be Jim, surprised if you don't see Jim Trestle is gonna be around this program at least a, a few times this year during some big games. Can we get him to dot the dag on I? Well, that should have took place last year. It should have, but it didn't. But if we I got that ever, loser out of the AD's office now. Yeah, somebody if I ever get on the phone. Talk Let's get you on the phone. Yeah, if I get a chance to talk to Bjork, that's going to be my round one request is, buddy, we need to get Trestle to dot the eye. Hey, guys, this was for our members only. Let me know, man. You guys know, know the drill. Put it in the comments if they even have comments on this. I'm pretty sure that you can comment on this. Put this in the comments what you think. You guys got to see this first. We won't release this to the to the to everybody else for a couple weeks. You get to watch it first. I want to know what you members think of my theory. Do you think there's that there's some legs to this? Is there something else about this that I'm missing? I'd like to know. Let me know what you all think, guys. Thanks so much for being a member. We really do appreciate that. That helps us out so much. Take advantage of being a member. Go to the store, theohiopodcast.com. Click on the store. Buy something from Chris. Get some free free shipping. When you, when you go to check out, make sure you, he knows it's you so uh, you don't have to pay for shipping. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Till next time, OH. I owe.